Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to my video on my favorite Korean skincare peptide serums. I have a total of five serums to share with you in today's video. Timestamps and links are in the description box below if you would like to jump around. But before we get into that, in case you are stumbling upon this video, I wanna make sure to say this is really intended to be peptides part two. There is a part one that you should absolutely watch before this video because it goes over everything related to peptides. Now the catch with that video is I did frame it around the ordinary and I've come to realize I think a lot of people are kind of moving past the ordinary. It makes sense, they're kind of more of a, an intro to skincare brand, but The Ordinary laid out their peptides so well that it made for a good groundwork to build upon what peptides are, what they supposedly can do, is there enough research behind them, spoiler, not really. So I figure rather than just repeating all of that, I'll direct you to that video and that way this video can just build on that. And also before we get into this video, I'm going to do my best to have some kind of price reference in this video. I want to be able to talk about the price per ounce of these products. In saying that, please know that the reason I don't include prices on K-Beauty products as much is because it's really hard to tell you what the actual price will be. It varies so much depending on what retailer you're shopping with. If you need a primer on that, she's also got a video. And with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into talking about these Korean peptide serums. I do want to start this video with a product that isn't actually my favorite, but again, it lays a good groundwork. So stay with me on this one. <laughs> this is the Ample In Peptide Shot Ampoule. It's the only product in this video that contains fragrance as well as alcohol. Although if I understand correctly, they do have a 2X version that does not contain those ingredients. What's nice about this is that in terms of price per ounce, this is the most affordable option coming in at $5.91 per ounce. This product has a total of three peptides in it, which we'll go ahead and go over. First off, we have acetylhexapeptide 8. That's a pretty recognizable peptide. A lot of people refer to it as argireline. This is a neurotransmitter inhibiting peptide, and you see how I've carefully chosen my words. We'll say this is used for relaxing facial muscles, Again, it's not a substitute for Botox, but it is using a similar principle in a topical form. I do not think that it gives you the same results as Botox, but it may help with relaxing the muscle so it moves a bit less. More research needed. Then we have palmitoyl pentapeptide 4. That one is part of Matrixyl, and that one is, again, a portion of collagen. Again, the premise here being that you are putting these portions of recognizable molecules onto your skin so that your skin responds and goes, why is there broken collagen here? Now, now I gotta go make more collagen. Y'all keep me so busy. I'm so overworked and underpaid. We're, we're all right there with you, skin. The final premise being that this peptide may help with encouraging the production of more collagen. And then one more peptide, and that is palmitoyl oligopeptide. <laughs> I'm going to refer to that video so many times. Remember how I said that peptides often change names, and that's part of what makes them confusing? This was actually the old name for palmitoyl hexapeptide 12. It may feel like scientists just change the names of things for funsies, but the reality is what happens is as scientists get a better understanding for an entire field of research, say peptides, they start wanting to categorize them better. And so clearly hexapeptide is a better way to differentiate the amino acid sequencing than a legopeptide. That makes sense, right? It's kind of like saying your aesthetic is dark academia instead of just preppy. In a similar premise to our last peptide, this one is a portion of elastin, and this one is used for repairing age-related damage. So that does come together to give you a well-rounded, even if a bit more concise, selection of peptides that are great for helping to prevent the signs of aging, and it is combined with other ingredients, including some human Mectins, your beta-glucan, your niacinamide is in this product. To talk about my own personal experience, I bought this one a while ago and I've got to say I am impressed with how long 3.83 ounces, 3.38 ounces 
of serum lasts, it's a big bottle. If you've ever seen someone talk about this serum before, they have undoubtedly talked about how it contains these little snakes or worms, I suppose, these little snakes that are supposed to be the peptides themselves. One thing I do want to point out is that when you're talking about peptides, they're again used at very low levels. For example, uh, acetylhexapeptide 8 is used at 50 parts per million. You wouldn't actually be able to see that in a product, so again, you really are looking at the peptide complex. You see how uh, the confusion around peptides just continues to spread. I feel like sometimes I apply this to my skin and I go, oh wow, you know, that was actually pretty easy to blend out. I didn't have any trouble. And then there's other times where I can't get them to dissolve and it's very frustrating to see all these little white flakes all over my skin. I, I, don't, I don't know why sometimes it blends well and sometimes it doesn't. But that does mean it tends to be a product that I grab at night just in case it's gonna give me trouble. Would rather not deal with little snakes under my makeup, you know what I'm saying? And again, it is a product that contains fragrance. It's actually remarkably strong in this product. Or maybe it's the fragrance alcohol blend that is strong. I, I smell a lot of fragrance in here, just as a heads up. Let's move on to the Purito Centella Green Level Buffet Serum. I'm going to go ahead and put up the ingredients for the Centella Unscented Serum. I do like that Purito does this. They give you the choice between a product that has fragrance, this one uses essential oils, or your fragrance-free version. But we're going to talk about the fragrance-free version to simplify things. I do want to say I think it's hilarious that this is called the Green Level Buffet Serum. Do you think that's why The Ordinary changed the name on their buffet serum? Did they feel like this was coming a little too close? Because it actually kind of does. It's, it's still pretty different, more simplified than The Ordinary's now multi-peptide serum. But it does in fact have both of the Matrixyl 3000 peptides in it. And as we talked about in the video, I cannot stop referencing the great thing about Matrixyl 3000 is that you get that increase in collagen production from one peptide and you have the other peptide helping to reduce inflammation. We also have a carryover from the Ample In. That very first peptide listed, palmitoyl hexapeptide 12, is in fact palmitoyl oligopeptide. I am a bit unsure why they included palmitoyl dipeptide 10. We just don't see that much about that, but the other three make perfect sense to me. And you can see how it comes together to make a product that targets anti-aging. And while this is a little bit more expensive in terms of price per ounce than the last product, you do see more going on in the formula. This product is focusing heavily on Centella Asiatica, and you have the active constituents in the formula. Asiatica side, Asiatic acid, Medecasic acid, niacinamide, ceramide, panthenol, it all comes together to make a really nice repair serum. In terms of texture, I think this is one that really is perfect for all skin types. It has your standard gel consistency. It sinks into the skin rapidly. It really does feel like a product that almost everybody could appreciate. Now we are continuing to build in terms of amount of peptides in products as well as the price per ounce, but I've got to include this product. It absolutely blew me away. You saw me do a sponsorship in the past with them. This is the V Green Nature Mucin Serum. If you saw my speed reviews, you know that this is a product that is designed to mimic the benefits of snail mucin and oh my goodness, they nailed it as a big fan of snail mucin and yet somebody who will admit to you all that there is a risk for allergy with snail mucin. They did a great job in the way they formulated this. What I find so interesting with the choice of peptides here is the inclusion of copper tripeptide 1. That is one of the more well-researched peptides and we often talk about the wound healing characteristics of copper peptides. What a perfect addition to a serum that is mimicking snail mucin, is it not? You see a blend of three peptides that are used for the purpose of stimulating collagen production, and we do see the return of acetylhexapeptide 8, the neurotransmitter inhibiting peptide. Again, that's not all this serum contains. We once again see ceramide, niacinamide, and panthenol. You know, one of you commented 
that this is uh, under Purito and seeing the similarities to the, the last serum we talked about, there's definitely some crossover, although personally, I do prefer this one. Now, this one does have a little bit of a thicker texture. Keep in mind, I have a drier skin type. So the thicker the texture gets, the more I fall in love. I would say this one takes a little bit longer to absorb versus the Purito, but it does, and it leaves your skin feeling so hydrated, so comfortable. And again, you're getting those same repairing benefits. Okay, I didn't even realize this until now, but apparently we are increasing the peptides up to a certain point and the price continues to increase in today's video. We gotta talk about R&W next. This is the Ceramide Concentrate. <sighs> yes, it's getting more expensive, but look at everything. Look at everything that is in this product. <laughs> Let's start with talking about the peptides. First off, we do have acetylhexapeptide 8. We have nonapeptide 1. That's an interesting addition into this formula. That one is used for skin brightening. The manufacturers claim that that one suppresses melanin formation in the skin, thereby leading to more even skin, less uh, spots on your skin, more research needed. Palmet oil tetrapeptide 7, the peptide modeled off IgG to reduce inflammation. We have quite the blend of peptides meant to stimulate collagen production, and again, copper tripeptide 1 for wound healing. It's just that that's not even close to explaining everything going on in this product. We have niacinamide, we have oat, calming oat. We have so many ceramide ingredients. <laughs> I love this serum. I cannot live without it. I tried so hard not to repurchase this. We've talked about this before. It's complicated to repurchase things because it means I can review less of the new products, but I couldn't go without this. I couldn't. I had to at least get the mini just so it was in my life because it is such a good product for when my skin needs a repair. I mean, again, because you don't just have peptides where we do need some more research, you also do have those well-studied ingredients. You do have ceramide, you do have niacinamide. This one does have a bit of a thicker texture. It's almost approaching a milky appearance, but still definitely more of a gel. Again, it's another one where I, I really think, I really think every product in this video can be used by all skin types, but this one surprisingly absorbs quickly as well. It leaves your skin feeling a bit emollient. Our very last peptide for today's video is a complete change of pace. We did not talk about these peptides at all in peptides part one, but today we are going to talk about the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Hyaluronic Botanical 2GF Wonderful Ampoule. What a name and the EGF as well as FGF that this contains. So this is a serum that is based around growth factors from rice. EGF refers to epidermal growth factor and FGF refers to fibroglast. I was talking too fast and I said fibroglass growth factor. I don't want that growth factor. Fibroblast growth factor. Now, when it comes to these, I'll tell you first off, FGF, not super well studied. However, EGF actually is one of the more well-researched peptides where we do have research conducted aside from just manufacturer data. This is an independent study in which 29 women between 39 and 75 used a serum with EGF for a total of three months. And at the end of the study, they saw an improvement in skin texture, pore size, a reduction of wrinkles. So kind of similarly to some of these other peptides, this one too might promote the production of collagen. It also might help with tissue regeneration, but it is exactly that reason that makes it a little bit controversial. You may have seen people talk about how EGF is considered to be mitogenic, but not mutagenic. And we do believe it is mitogenic, which means it encourages cell division. Now, overall that is good, but if you have any kind of spots on your skin, if you have a, a mole that's not looking too good, please stop watching this video and make an appointment with a dermatologist, but also don't use EGF serums, probably. I love this serum, but you may notice something that I have up on the screen there. Oh, this is our most expensive product in this video, and it's from Haru Haru Wonder. Let me tell you, when I saw the price on this, this room was filled with sound waves. 
from me screaming. This company has products that are, you know, $20, not $48, and get this, I double-checked this, $48 on Stylevana, Yes Style, $60 on Joelsey, $64 on Style Korean. Now I'm gonna give you a tip, and I don't like to do this, it is very out of character for me, but again, as somebody who likes a good deal, I am going to tell you, I repurchased this. I'm getting a little low on it, and I love it, oh my goodness, I personally love this serum. So, it is currently $20.90 on Amazon. Hopefully it is still that price when I post this video. Y'all know I'm not somebody who is like run and buy this, but in case you are somebody who is also getting low, as a heads up. It has a beautiful texture, it sinks right into your skin, and again, I do feel that this has been amazing anecdotally in terms of helping with repair. Now, again, I do want to reiterate, as I said in Peptides Part 1, this entire family of ingredients needs more research, so again, this is why I would say go with the more well-studied ingredients first. If you want to experiment with some of these newer ingredients, feel free. But the reality is we still need more research to be able to say with confidence that EGF and FGF are repairing our skin. Just as a big disclaimer, you know I try to tell you exactly how things are and where they are, because again, that could change. Just because we don't have the research doesn't mean something doesn't work. It just means we can't say that it's proven. Anyway, as you've gathered, I personally love this serum. I did just repurchase it on Amazon. And my friends, that brings us to the end of this video. Now, just to quickly say here, this is not an exhaustive list of all of the Korean beauty peptide serums. I was this close to including Manyo into this video, but ultimately we're gonna talk more about Manyo because I bought more from the brand and I have a full brand review coming, so we'll save that for now. As always, feel free to share in the comments if you've tried other Korean beauty serums with peptides or other Korean beauty products that you'd like to share feel free. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you all next time.